right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. Uh, we won't be offended by it. Don't be too offended by it. <laughs> um, but we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians. Um, we do the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website, um, which I'll be showing at the end of the show, and see any of our recordings that we have up there. Um, we do a mixture of things here, um, training sessions, uh, book reviews, um, just demonstrations, whatever. Um, basically, like I said, anything of interest to librarians, we'll have on, we're happy to have on the show. And we have guest speakers that sometimes come in, and sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff, which is what we have this morning. Um, today with us is, just to my left, uh, Catherine Brockmeyer, who's from here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And I'm not sure in what capacity you're doing this presentation. I know. Uh, grant program grant. manager. Okay, grant program manager. <laughs> um, and Laura Johnson, who's our um, continuing education coordinator. And she's also on the grant committee. Yeah, she's also on the grant committee yeah. for, the, for when we do these internships. And we do internships to the commission. Um, but I'm just going to hand over to you guys to take over and tell us about um, what you're doing today. Tell okay. us about the internships that people can get and the best way to do it. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, again, my name is Katherine Brockmeyer and I am the grant program coordinator or manager uh, and I work with the, inter the 21st Century Librarian Internship Program that was funded through a grant to the Nebraska Library Commission from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So today is serving as an orientation to uh, the libraries that were recently funded an internship grant to hire interns in their own libraries. And I do see that we have individuals from out of state and from other libraries other than public libraries. And we welcome you today. We're so glad that you're here. And we hope that you will learn something from what we have to share today and be able to apply it to your particular situation. I just want to show you a, a, the starting page for the internship grant program. This is where the uh, this is where the applicants and, and potential applicants went to learn about the internship grant program. It's at now hiring at your library.nebraska.gov and then you click on internships. And it gave a brief introduction to the program itself. So you are welcome to go through that and see what was required for the grant application, which also gives a great background and some helpful links to the um, various components of the grant program, the internship grant program. And so you're welcome to peruse through that. At the same time, uh, we also have an orientation document that is tips for a successful internship grant program experience. And we can also um, share some of that with you. These links to the survey monkey we'd appreciate it if just the intern if you want to go through and take a look at the surveys uh, for the non grantees that's fine um, if you want to get an idea of what we're offering that's just fine Keith Curry Lance is our external evaluator and so those are on his site if you have any pre uh, extra questions for him please contact me and I'll put you in touch with him he's with RSL research and so there's that uh, the tip sheet that we give to our recent awardees. Going back to the slideshow, this program is a Laura Bush 21st Century Librarian program that we received a grant in 2010 from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. They have generously funded internship grants. We are also in partnership with the Nebraska Library Association who was able to give us some matching funds in our first year uh, through a foundation grant to their association. And they have, we have worked closely in partnership with them. Uh, they give us feedback. They uh, participate in the grant application review process. And we work closely with them to make sure that uh, we have a mutual understanding of the goals of the program. They're also a partner in the actual grant itself. To, from IMLS. We welcome your questions and your comments all the way through this 
uh, presentation because we want to hear from you and your personal experiences and any kind of questions that you have will be of benefit to the entire group. So please do chime in. So for those of you that uh, got an internship grant and all of those of you who are considering having an internship in your library, what's, what are the next steps? What do we do next? Uh, first of all, you need to advertise for the, for the position and we have a job posting example that was provided generously to us from the, looking for it, Ann Arbor District Library. They must have received a grant at some point in time and so I had learned about their job posting and so if you need an example of a job posting, um, that is available here. Um, it's great to give your um, prospective interns an opportunity to submit a resume to go through an interview process. Uh, that's a huge learning experience, especially for younger individuals who this might be their first job. And so we have heard back from our internship grant recipients that that has been a great process for the applicants. Also there's uh, a way in Nebraska to advertise your position and that's through intern Nebraska, uh, internne.com. And that website looks like this. Um, that's the Intern Nebraska program. It's through the Department of Economic Development and you can post your internship and advertise through it, through that and it's free, I believe. It should be. <laughs> so when you're hiring, you might consider how you're going to pay your um, intern through our program, we prefer that you give them a lump sum or two, two um, payments. Right now, we are able to provide $1,000 um, to each library for their internship grant. Um, that's what they've received. Some of them contract with their employees and they are required then to fill out their own, oops, that went backwards. They're required to fill out their own um, contract for that and they are also required to probably take care of their own taxes. Others uh, go through a temporary employee. What's really important is to talk with your city offices and make sure that however you're deciding to hire is in hire consort is with, in. How, with how they believe that they ought to be um, hired. Some of uh, our libraries contract for $10 per hour. Um, you might consider for 100 hours, you might also can take into consideration how much your other employees are making um, and perhaps uh, kind of change your, your tactics in terms of what you um, are going to offer your intern. And if you would like, after you hire your intern, if you would like to uh, give a press release, we will be sending out a press release here from the Nebraska Library Commission that um, shows the awardees the libraries that have been awarded and you can use that as an example to um, share that with your local news outlets. Um, you might put some personal information once you've hired your intern and give some background on that intern. Talk about what a boon this is to the community and how it's going how it's going to benefit the library and how it's going to benefit the intern. Maybe talk about some special projects. But the example that we have right now, the this year's uh, press release isn't up quite yet, but we do have the previous years from 2013, and you can use that as an example as well. If you want to grab some quotes or use some of the, the language, it's there. We do have some required paperwork of our awardees. You need to inform us of the start date and the estimated end date of the internship. It's good to have a really good idea to be in communication with your intern in terms of your expectations for them and what they're able to provide. Please do, awardees, remember that your internship, your internship must wrap up by September 30th per your agreement with us. And then at the start of the internship, we need you to direct your intern to complete and sign the survey completion consent form. That's um, just that they're giving consent for their responses to be used. They only need to provide their first name and their last initial. That's just for tracking purposes. Otherwise, uh, no identifying information is used in our reporting. It's for our evaluation purposes, not to evaluate them. And you need to direct your intern to complete the online baseline survey.
that is a requirement of the grant. During the internship, we would like for you to track your intern's hours and activities. And at the end, end of the internship, we would like you to direct the intern to complete the online post-internship survey and complete the, the supervisor will complete two reports, one about the internship program itself, and then for each intern, you, you provide a report. It's an online, also through SurveyMonkey, an online report on each intern. Some of these libraries have, have decided to split up their funding and hire more than one intern. So what are the goals of the program? Um, this is what we reported to IMLS and decided on with uh, NLA. Interns get involved in real library work that takes advantage of their experience and interests. So through the interview process, you might find out what sorts of things that they're interested in. And if you decide to hire them, you might sit down with them and decide what sorts of special projects. You might also notice there are some areas uh, in their background that you feel that, you, you feel that they might like to learn more about in terms of customer service or working on computers. Maybe they're more interested in what goes on behind the scenes in terms of technical services. We want to make sure that the interns get involved in real library work that takes advantage of, these ex of their experience and interests. And this does introduce promising interns to the varied and exciting work of Nebraska libraries. This is our recruiting aspect of our IMLS grant. This is the way for us to recruit the next generation of Nebraska librarians. Right here I talk about that as a recruitment tool, helping them view the library as a viable career opportunity. And then also, if you please would have the opportunity to talk about educational opportunities in Nebraska, we have opportunities at the undergraduate level through Central Community College for a, an LIS certificate or an associate's degree. And then um, some of that can feed in through uh, academic transfer to the University of Nebraska Omaha undergraduate program. And then we also have two master's programs available, three actually. Uh, one is in education through the University of Nebraska Omaha, another through the University of Nebraska Kearney. And those are the education uh, endorsements. And then we also have the opportunity for students to go through the University of Missouri and Columbia with a satellite in Omaha. And you can ask me for more information about that or you can go to nowhiringatyourlibrary.com and go under education and you'll be able to find that information. So we want to show our interns every aspect of library work from the front lines to the to behind the scenes. And also, uh, one, of the focus, one of the focuses of our grant is to um, focus on, that was redundant. <laughs> one of the reasons for our IMLS grant is to introduce our interns to the role of technology in libraries. And so we would like for you to think about what you have to offer them and also what they might have to offer your library with, uh, with insights. One of the reasons why we provide these to the libraries is it gives them a boost financially that they might be able to hire someone that they may not otherwise be able to hire. They might also be able to expand a program or complete a project and bring in fresh ideas. So once they're hired, you work with the intern to determine how supervision will be conducted and what projects will be completed. I have, we have an example of a schedule of activities here, if you would like to look at with the timeline in terms of what all would be accomplished. This is a, an eight-week program. Some of you might go 10 weeks, some of you might go 12 weeks, but you need to hurry. We just have to be done by September 30th, at least for our awardees. Laura, would you like to talk a little bit about the schedule of activities? And then we're also going to talk about the orientation. Let me just go on here. Um, about the orientation for uh, our interns, we'd like for you to give them a formal orientation as if they were a new hire. It can be uh, an abbreviated orientation, but uh, we do have a sample here just to make sure that you get to all areas, <clears throat> excuse me, all areas of library work. One of the things we look at when we get an application for um, from a library, and the grant is to the library, not, not to the student or to the intern. Um, but one of the things we look at in their application is, do they have a plan? 
do they have a uh, an idea of how they are going to introduce library work to the intern and uh, a kind of a schedule for the um, activities that the intern will be taking part in um, because this needs to be a two-way street. The intern needs to be learning, but the library then needs also for the intern to be doing meaningful work. So we look at, and the only way we can, the way that's going to happen is because there's a plan. It, it isn't going to just happen magically. You have to give this some, some thought. Um, and it turns out that, boy, there's a lot to learn in a library. Um, library work is actually pretty complicated. So we like to see that uh, the library has an idea of who is going to conduct um, orientation, who's going to supervise the work, um, and what exactly the intern will be doing. We're um, really interested in interns. There's, there's work that needs to be done in terms of <clears throat> shelving books, uh, that kind of thing. But there's also um, thought in uh, determining how collections are developed, um, how uh, library administration interacts with the, um, with the community and with the um, uh, governance of the community and the governance of the library. And we'd like the intern to see all of those things. We'd like them to see all of the aspects of library work. Um, so we'd really like to see not just uh, a particular project, although having an intern do a particular project is good, but we'd like to see an intern get really a, a taste of everything. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking for in the application, and that's what we're, and that, and the reason we look for that is because our experience has shown that that's what makes for a successful internship where both the library and the intern feel that they got a great deal out of the experience. Okay? Absolutely. And I think that speaks to um, helping, especially if you're hiring um, high school students or early college, to give them a sense of what it's like to be a professional in, in a career, um, to give them a, a chance to gain some new skills in terms of customer service or uh, attention to detail or communicating with coworkers. And so this, with their hands-on experience, they do gain or enhance the skills that they already have. And we hear back time and time again how essential this is for the success, as Laura said, of an internship program and to help an intern feel successful by the end of their program because they do report on these things. And one of the things that they always say is, I had no idea how much work goes into a library. I had no idea how much goes on behind the scenes. I thought basically what happened all day was checking books in and out and shelving. And so giving them a well-rounded education in terms of what does go on in a library, even if um, you have libraries uh, that are larger that specialize where um, individuals work the front desk and that's about it, or individuals are hired just to shelve or individuals are hired to work in technical services and cataloging and so on and so forth. Showing them, showing them that they can specialize in a particular area is very good, um, but in some of the smaller town libraries, it's a one-man, two-man, three-man band woman, one woman, two woman, three woman <laughs> band, but that, uh, you know, that you need to be a jack or jane of all trades and not necessarily a master of none, that you need to be educated in the various areas. And Laura can speak to that if you'd like to follow up with her as a continuing education coordinator. She works on the accreditation of libraries to some yes. effect, and she also works on the certification for our librarians and the cert certification modules that go into this. And so that is one way uh, for you to think about really taking this seriously as opposed to having an extra pair of hands for summer reading program, which is what we do here often and we're very happy to supply the funding so that you can have an extra pair of um, hands for summer reading program or another project. But we would like to make sure that you do keep in mind and make it a priority to show them every aspect of library work. Oh, wow. 
Hey. I didn't realize I was going to do that. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get dizzy. So we do, I did share with you the proposed timeline and schedule of internship activities. Putting some thought into this is what we looked for uh, from some of our, from all of our library applicants. And for them to focus on an orientation plan, we really needed to hear that from our uh, library app our applicants to have an understanding that this is, like Laura said, a two-way street. Some of the things that you could, we, again, we focus on technology, and so we would like for you to uh, show them some of the resources that librarians use, and one of them is Nebraska Access. I don't have that pulled up here. Actually, I'll just go back to press release, and over here, if you scroll down, there is Nebraska Access right now. You can show them some databases. You can show them these areas. Let's say you give them a particular reference question, you want them to go and find out how to answer it. You could take them to Nebraska Access, and everything is broken down in categories. And on many of these pages are links to vetted and reviewed and unbiased um, or balanced uh, list of websites that, where they might be able to find their answer. So giving them, you know, a chance to answer a real reference question um, or letting them work at the front desk and standing with them and helping them find the answer and provide that to their library customer. Um, sharing information about, you might ask them to write an article or um, contribute to a blog post or make a Twitter uh, a tweet, um, making a flyer or a poster, especially if you have some individuals who really like to work on desktop publishing, that might be good, uh, a, a fun thing for them to do. Writing a library article or uh, some librarians have uh, a weekly, in their newspaper, they are able to write a, a weekly or monthly article for the newsletter and helping, letting them help chime in or write it themselves so that they're disseminating what they're learning and putting it and seeing how librarians reach out to the community, share with the community what the library is doing. They also, in terms of uh, technology literacy, having them look at a website uh, and see what makes it uh, unbiased and fair and um, neutral but informative. So looking at .gov websites, looking at .org websites, and other websites where the information that's provided will help a, a library customer find the answers that they need. Anything else on that, Laura? Any other kinds of technology sorts of? And we're looking at, you know, real on the surface, one little, you know, one 30-minute introduction to something. We're not expecting this to be the focus, you know, of the entire program or to take up uh, a whole ton of time. Well, there's really, a, there's a lot of technology used in libraries and sometimes in ways that we don't even think about. Um, generally, cataloging is very, um, uses technology, actually cataloging probably has started using technology before any other part of the library. Mm -hmm. um, so how, what, what goes into cataloging a book, how library catalogs work, um, then uh, what goes into checking out a book. Circulation um, seems like it's so simple and, and yet it turns, it turns out that there's lots of odd things that happen there. And it too has a lot of technology involved. Um, and then some of the things, the services libraries offer like interlibrary loan. Um, uh, and then there's the, the um, patron access computers. Um, we've been very lucky in Nebraska to, uh, with another grant, provide a lot of libraries in Nebraska with computers for um, library user use. That's kind of redundant. But. And so uh, being able to help people with their computer problems, I think, is a, is a very big part of what libraries are doing these days, uh, keeping all that technology working, which just takes some tech skills. Um, you just need to understand what a network is and what makes it go. And, and we did have an intern who had some knowledge and savvy in this area, and he actually helped a library reconfigure their computer lab. So he had some he had some no, some knowledge of how a network works and some different things like that, and so he was able 
to jump right in and help them reorganize their computer lab. So, so in some ways, we would like to see planning and we would like to see a schedule um, of activities that you're planning for an intern, but we'd also like to see you sit down with the intern that is selected to work in your library and kind of develop a, a, a cooperative plan where the intern also has input into what's going to happen and what they're going to do. Um, I have to admit that probably no one chooses to do filing, and but there's a lot of filing to do. We file cards, we file books. We, um, so there, I think people also have to understand, because this is sometimes the first job that a person has had, um, they have to understand that there are certain tasks that just have to get done every day, and certainly they would be taking part in those, but that would not be the only thing they'd be doing. We did have one applicant who mentioned that the, the, the potential intern would help, be helping with landscaping. But who else is going to take care of that? Yeah. If they don't hire out for a landscaper, if the city doesn't take care of that, not that they'll be pu pulling weeds. I think they talked about more more in the lines of planting flowers or, um, you know, helping with the maintenance. But you know, I, I don't think you want your intern out there pulling weeds for hours on end or anything. But understanding that that's sometimes what the library staff actually do. I do have a comment related to what you're talking about, about um, knowing the basic technology skills. Um, yeah. Um, hardly agree with the need to be able to help the public with just very basic skills. Many tech skills we take for granted, using Word, being able to know how to print to a printer, that yes. kind of thing, are unknown for a segment of the public that we serve. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times uh, what we do find is that the library staff really appreciate having a fresh face. Mm -hmm. They oftentimes learn tech, t uh, tips and tricks to uh, using the technology that they already have in Word, Publisher, uh, Facebook, um, uh, Excel. Uh, mm -hmm. We have sometimes uh, people who come up with book lists that need to be maintained and perhaps the intern has some Excel uh, experience and they have worked on that before. So we also love to have people who can discuss books. Um, that's one of the things that happens at the circulation desk a lot. And um, we're interested in readers and uh, sharing reading with people. And I think that's an important aspect of library work that you have to keep reading. Um, and but talking to, to your library users. And oftentimes what we saw in the grant applications is that they did want to hire, and we do find out afterward, is that they did want to hire someone younger to look at the young adult collection to, for collection development, to look at young adult programming, to actually if you hire an intern who's pretty well networked uh, with a peer group, that that might actually draw a group into the library. Um, so that also has been, uh, we had one where a male was hired and he conducted a, a book group for young boys or for yeah. boys and so uh, he he that's not the only reason he was hired but that was one of the projects that developed once he was hired so what what would we like for you to see and what would be a benefit actually to you as well during the intern it's internship itself if the intern and I've done this as a practicum when I was doing my library science practicum is I kept a, a diary and then I summarized some of the things that I learned along the way so a scrapbook or diary um, taking pictures of the intern in action, and if this does happen, and you do share those with us, for which we would love to see these because we use those for reporting purposes, and we also um, share those on our Facebook page. Um, we do need a release. We have two photo releases that they need to sign, and if anybody else is in the picture, uh, any other staff or any other uh, individuals, especially children that are in the picture where you can see their faces, we do need releases from them too. If you get pictures of children from the back, um, we don't need releases for them, but we do need releases from interns, and if they're underage, their parent has to sign if they're under 18. Save copies of their written works and other projects, um, or if they are highlighted in the newspaper or something to that effect, we'd love to see news clips. We sure like to hear what uh, has been disseminated and what, they've, what kind of products have come out of that. It, uh, we have somebody who posted to Pinterest, they posted to Facebook, they've done tweets. 
about their interns, uh, they mentioned their interns. If you can, if you could mention that you received a grant from the Nebraska Library Commission and Nebraska Library Association through a grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, at least on your press releases or anything that really goes out to the media, we sure would like appreciate that you include that. We do have a Facebook page for our Nebraska librarians and for scholarship students who are also in another part of our 21st century librarian program. And this would be a great way for your intern to see how that, what, what, what professionals do to stay abreast of uh, current topics and issues in, in library service. And for them to take a look through what those things have, what we have to say on there and what our um, fans of the page have to say. Because sometimes they make comments on the posts. So even looking at one of these posts and following the link and reading up on current events and that sort of thing, you can see those here. Um, and so we welcome you to visit the page or become a fan. And then we do ask that you stay in touch with us, keep us updated if something happens, let's say that this intern doesn't work out. And that does happen, and that's okay. But you've only expended $200 on the intern you do need to hire again. Um, just let us know that that other individual has uh, left the program and that you plan to hire for a new individual and then give us their name. Have them fill out the baseline survey. The uh, previous intern could do the exit survey depending on what terms you end. If they just, it's a time commitment and it's not working out, you might ask for them to complete the, the um, follow-up survey just so we can bring things to a close with them. Uh, I think that we've covered basically everything. Um, we talked about, again, about technology. Um, some of our uh, interns have actually started uh, Facebook page. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, the brainstorming, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, who do you plan to hire? Are you looking to hire somebody younger? Are you looking to hire somebody, uh, or have you had somebody express interest who's looking at a, a different career they've already had? And there is no age limit except for the, the lower age limit in terms of who you can hire legally in the state of Nebraska. But, um, and you might want to look at how mature they are, how mature they are. But we also have had uh, college students that are back for the summer. You never know, they, might be con they can finish their undergraduate degree and they might consider a master's. That's great. Um, so high school students, college students, uh, students who aren't in college but are younger, um, still living in your town or considering um, they're in transition. Other individuals who are um, considering a career in libraries, it, it actually could be somebody, and this has happened, someone that you're looking at, you see down the line that there's going to be attrition in your library, that people are going to leave your library, and you'd kind of like for them to try it out and see if this is something they might be interested in doing. We have had uh, interns that were later hired on at the same library where they did their internship, and that's great. This is a recruiting tool. We'd like for you to give them a chance to learn about it, and we'd like for you to um, uh, try them out. That's absolutely fine. Um, it's like taking a test drive. <laughs> right. And then we talked about some special projects. Um, if if uh, what one library that we had, they decided to do uh, some work with the student doing ebooks um, and that sort of thing, and so they went to our previous Encompass Lives. Um, another was on genealogy. And they went to our previous Encompass Lives, which you can access, and I'm doing a plug here for Krista. Yeah. <laughs> but under Education and Training, there's Encompass Live webcast. You can see what's coming up, um, which would be fun for them to sit in and actually be able to comment and see how that works, how, what it's like to be in a live webinar. Or you can go to the recordings. And they were looking at genealogy. And so uh, this librarian uh, was a real engaged librarian with the Nebraska Library Commission. And so she was aware of these previous recordings and so they went in and they viewed a recording. Um, she also at one point in time um, took her student, they were redesigning their website and this was a different intern and they went to a training that was provided by the Nebraska Library Commission on WordPress sites called Librarians, Nebraska Librarians on the Web, Nebraska Libraries on the oh, Web. The libraries on the web yeah. And so she took her to the training and was this intern was in, uh, uh, was on the ground with her laying the groundwork for their new website and had input into how that went. So there, and there are other, of course, many other special projects. There are summer reading where a, a, a student could um, actually lead one program or do the story hours. You know, they can hand out prizes too. 
that you know that's what a librarian does but we certainly want you to focus on um, some of the more professional aspects as well of summer reading program also looking outside the library walls who do you partner with what kind of outreach do you do um, if you go to attend a Lions Club meeting and you're going to talk about summer reading take them along um, transfer knowledge and that has to do with um, them what, what kinds of projects again can they do to show what they have learned can they write a newsletter article can they tweet um, can they help you um, with your set up your Facebook page so that they see what it's like to um, to do publicity and that sort of thing and then what else what else can we think of so this is our time for our attendees to please weigh in and talk about any of these um, or ask any questions or any of these topics or any other topics that you can can think of or if you have a question for the group in terms of I'm looking to do this project what is what do other people have, what is their experience if you have any questions or comments or ideas um, use the questions section in your GoToWebinar inter interface go ahead and type it in there and I'm watching here to see if anybody says anything and while we're doing that I am going to open a report from a previous year goodness me Goodness me. I bet this is it. Um, this was some internship grant program press coverage that I was able to glean um, from Google in terms of what uh, libraries were able to get out to the press or from the press release that we sent out. Um, so they used our wording basically. Uh, and also blogs, Schuyler Public Library's blog. They basically took the press release and they put it, posted it on their website. Omaha World Herald picked up, picked up the information. McCook Daily Gazette um, featured a student who was doing a, a joint program through the local community college library and his public library. And partnerships are in, encouraged. Um, if you could, if you wanted to take your student on a field trip and go to look at a different kind of library or to visit the school library in your town so that they can see that there are other types of libraries and other opportunities for various careers, not necessarily in a public library, perhaps when they go get back to college, and this has happened, one, one of our interns recently got hired on at their university library. And so now they are working part-time in their university library. And who knows? You may have planted a seed. They planted a seed and they're working. It's, you know, got a start date and an end date. When they graduate from college, they may leave that. But you may have planted a seed in the back of their mind. They might be thinking about a master's program or going back and getting a, a certificate in library, in library science and working in a library. You just never know. I think this brings up one thing that I'd, I'd just like to mention, which is there's a picture here. And many of your smaller newspapers um, love their photo opportunities they love to have a picture so trying to include a picture with publicity um, materials is really a good idea and you know today a picture is so easy to take and you can take 27 of them to get one good picture uh, digitally so uh, do consider trying to make sure that you get pictures That was a really lengthy article. It was a great article on what he was doing. Um, Republican Library, Republican Valley Library System also picked up on that article. Uh, let me see here. I want to show you what happened on Facebook. Oh, dearie me. Let's see if I can find it. Excuse the scrolling. I hope I don't make you dizzy. Got to get down here to the report on internship grants. Uh, what we like about this is that we reach libraries that are <coughs> not necessarily in metropolitan areas, but we have uh, a nice cross-section of libraries across the state. 
if rural libraries can afford it, uh, we highly encourage them to to hire an intern if they haven't received a grant. But to help to help the city see that there is a need for this, that there's need for gainful employment, which is also what we hear oftentimes um, from our library applicants, is that they would like. Uh, the community see that there is an opportunity for gainful employment for their local youth. Here a student uh, in, the, in the newspaper, there was a picture of her working with a display. Uh, here an intern uh, visited another library, a larger library, and got us a tour of their library and then the small library, Rock County Public Library, posted that on their Facebook page. And then one of our library interns um, actually wrote on our wall and that was really nice to, to hear from her that she uh, was engaged and she found a place to share what she had learned and she showed that uh, her satisfaction, her gratitude for the internship grant. So that was really professional of her to do. So that takes care of one of our most recent reports. And so this is what we share with the Institute of Museum and Library Services to show what the outcomes are. And what we really love to hear from libraries, uh, later on we follow up the libraries and ask, where is your intern now? And we did this, this gal right here, one of, the, one of the things that she did while she was an intern was that she learned about the story walk. And they watched mm -hmm. uh, an Encompass Live on uh, the Hastings Public Library's story walk. And so she came back over break from college and she put together the story walk and there uh, was a real high participation rate from the kids. And so um, right there that was something that she learned and then after her internship was over she did she did come back and implement the project that she had worked on. Right. So there was some follow through there. Yeah. We really appreciated hearing about that. Don't be shy. We do want to hear what we have planned for the summer. Please, please chime in at this time. Write in, in uh, type it in into the comments section. Nobody said anything yet. Oh, no. Well, how, how many of you listening right now do have um, an intern coming in this summer? Could we, could we see a show of hands maybe? Yeah, you can click the raise hand on your interface. Here's who's here, the check off one. You know who they are. It's on the back as well. Rose at uh, La Vista, and Jennifer Norton. Are we seeing any? Okay. Amy. Amy. Gen Res Jennifer Res has mm -hmm. raised her hand. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Celine Swan from Grand Island. Terry yep, Wingate Island. from Omaha. Lori Yoakum. Wilson, yep, she just said Lori. Celine, yep, Grand Island, Wilson. Okay, so we have a lot of people here. We're going to have an intern. Um, and we do have one that uh, we do have today, Ruth Strassler, because uh, she's with the Antelope County Archives and she is working with her local library. And they are going to, ha uh, they're interested in starting a special library and they actually just contacted the Nebraska Library Commission to be recognized as a special library. And so the intern will work through their public library and in partnership with this Antelope County Archives to look into what, can, what goes into uh, developing a special library. Uh, this person's going to be, you know, just right, right at the, at the ground level and right at the start of something very special. And so they're going to see what goes into organizing and um, well, developing that'll be, that'll a special library. That'll be a really library. interesting process. So that'll be a real, thinking real, outside the box that you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Think about other things that are, could be related to libraries even vaguely. Yeah. So if you have a historical society and you would like for the the student to meet with somebody from the historical society and learn about how they catalog or organize their um, holdings, even if they don't necessarily have a library, because uh, it would be interesting then for the student to sit in and listen to what you, the librarian, have to say and, and um, contribute to, to somebody from a, in, to the conversation with somebody from a historical society. Amy from North Bend says that they have, they have one as well. Oh, good. Awesome. So that's another thing to consider. Um, and, you know, there's plenty of time. If you get into the middle of the internship and something exciting pops up, you, you just because you wrote something in your orientation plan or your schedule of activities does not mean you can't change it. 
Um, you can tack something on. You might downplay something else once you find out what the strengths of your intern is. Um, another thing to consider is uh, ebooks, e-readers, them learning about OverDrive, which is the downloadable ebooks and audiobooks, and how to help your patrons or your library customers um, utilize that service um, and helping them learn about what a consortium is. Uh, you know, some of this might just be too much detail. You only have so much time. But these are certain things that you can mention in passing. Another thing you might consider is attending a town hall meeting or uh, a committee meeting, meeting with your uh, with your board, meeting with your friends group, uh, just even if they stop in for five minutes and they're introduced and they say hi to everybody and let the president explain a little bit about what your friends group does. Um, just so that they have an, and have an understanding of what all goes on uh, in, in library in libraries and in the library world because there it's it's many and varied so um, and you never know uh, that might also be of interest to a student. Uh, they may never actually go into the profession, but they may keep it in the back of their mind at some point in time that they would like to serve on the board or that they would like to volunteer in some capacity for a library in the future. And that's another way to recruit because they are our best advocates. They are our supporters and they can be a voice to the community for us. Come on now, don't be shy. Any special projects? Summer reading projects, we want to hear about those too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be, we know you all just said you have interns. What are you doing with them? Or what are you planning on doing with them? If you haven't started yet. Some of them might, they might not have actually started the project. So they, go, they have till September, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Or what are you looking for in an intern? Amy has a question. Celine has a question. Or did they no, they raised their hand when you were asking oh, who has right. an intern. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that's when they said that they did, yeah. Okay. So. No, please. These grant applications uh, are... Wait, Amy. Okay. Amy in North Bend says, in North Bend, we'd like to start a teen advisory board. Ah, good idea. Oh. And I have no idea how. <laughs> so that would be a good project. Um, we've actually done a previous Encompass Live about that. La Vista Public Library has one. Their um, uh, Youth Services Library in there did one, so you could look at that for ideas. Um, Laura Yoakum also says in Wilson, starting at the end of May, um, they've hired an intern and are very excited for her to start at the end of May. Um, our big project will be helping us with social media. Great. That's right. I was excited to hear about Pinterest, um, that this one library had started to use Pinterest and mm -hmm. that they were posting to Pinterest because you find um, you find a, a different population. Maybe you're, you don't have your Pinterest users may not be Facebook users. And so there's also on here, if you haven't started a Pinterest board uh, or account, there's also an Encompass Live, I believe, on starting Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Is there one out there? There might be from a while ago. I don't remember. There so. might be. Yeah, wait, this is also there, something. There was something on Pinterest. Yeah. You know, and, and perhaps your your intern has used Pinterest, and so you can figure it out together. Mm -hmm. So that would be something exciting to do. I, I um, did have um, a student who they hadn't, their library hadn't started a Facebook page, and so they did it together. They navigated that together, decided what to post, learned how to post, when to post, mm -hmm. how to admin, be an admin of a Facebook page. Um, so that was that was pretty exciting, and they were actually calling me because I've got some experience being an admin of Facebook. So they were calling me to say what's the best way to set this up, and um, I actually was on the phone with the intern more than I was with the librarian. Yeah. We have a couple other comments here. Um, Terry Wingate at Omaha Public says um, we want the interns. We want interns who are able to interact with both the patrons and the staff, young and old. Um, they'll get a taste of public service and, and the behind-the-scenes work. So, like, she, like you said, yeah. putting them anywhere and everywhere. Um, I was thinking about that. You never know where, what might catch this particular intern's attention at the library. Like you said, there's so many different things we do in the library that you can't just say make them do one thing because that might not be the thing that clicks with them. It might be the behind-the-scenes cataloging, not the public service. So, you know, toss them in everywhere. Um, and she says, in a previous year, one intern had a journalism BA, so she conducted some writing workshops with the um, young adult and the, the juvenile uh, users in the library. And we actually reported on that because um, that student heard from 
that student heard from one of the, the youth and their parent how excited they were to participate in that workshop. So uh, one of the things that we like to get back to that we'd like to get back to is how is this affecting your community? Are you receiving feedback from your community? Are they happy to see a new, a new face? Ha has your intern done something that um, garners some sort of uh, feedback or surprise or you know something to that effect? We absolutely want to hear those success stories, well, those feel-good stories. Terry said they hired her, that intern. Oh, that's um, pretty she cool. She said, we hired her. She's doing an after-school outreach program now for Omaha Public Library. So oh, isn't that wonderful? There you go. Perfect follow-up and success of the program. Um, and Jennifer Norton, going to what you were just saying about community, and she posted this before you even started talking about that, um, at Neely Public Library, says, our intern will be participating in our community's 4th of July celebration by helping with the float the library will have in the parade. So the library is going to have a float right there in, this, in the city parade. That's great. Super. And they learn about um, how the library participates as is an active participant in the community along with other organizations and businesses and how librarians or libraries are seen as an essential service to to the citizens of their town and that a float is one way of putting their name out there. It's it's promotion, it's publicity, it's uh, you know, getting your name out there and seeing the faces of the people that work in the library and um, celebrating that. So, um, and that's, you know, in terms of a, a smaller town, that's some free publicity right there. And I think one of the things we're hearing here is the amazing things that interns can accomplish. Teenage, I don't, I don't think we always remember, I don't because I don't have teenagers at home, how energetic they are. Um, an intern really can accomplish a great deal. They and they do have some great ideas. They so do, they do, and a lot of our interns help with the end of summer celebration, and that brings in the parents. The parents have helped the kids monitor their participation in summer reading, and so that you know you're doing some outreach to the community. The parents are involved, and um, so end of end of summer celebrations is also great. Another thing that uh, the interns learn about in terms of their energy is focus. Can they, can they design a project? Can they follow through? And they, can they bring it to a completion? And can they reflect on it? So <clears throat> that's also uh, another huge um, uh, opportunity for learning and gaining experience. Nothing new. Nothing new. No. We so really far. appreciate mm -hmm. you weighing in. Um, we hope that we've given you some, some, it, it, we have some, we have some participants from other libraries. We'd love to hear from you. Why are you here today? What were you hoping to learn? What kind of library are you from? Um, are you, do you already have an internship program in place and you were looking for new ideas? We'd love to hear from you. What do you, what do you have to, to tell us? <clears throat> because the, you know there's an opportunity in in possibly in ac academic libraries um, in special libraries in I think we have somebody from a library system here and perhaps you're trying to learn how to promote internships to the libraries in your system um, and what 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 advantages there are to spending the money on having an internship at their library or to show justification for having an internship at your library. Ah. Um, we uh, Jamie Poster, who's at the Denton High School Library in Texas, but she's a native Nebraskan. Oh. Ah. She was in Denton. Um, intern, they got an intern studying at their high school, and they're just, they came here to look for ideas of what to do with them, <laughs> I guess. That's great. Yeah. You know, in a school library, there are other aspects that go into um, a school library that, that distinguishes, from, distinguishes it from a public library. And so to focus mm -hmm. on that, to talk about what a school librarian does, um, to talk about uh, the, your user population, to talk about how that's different from, you know, from public libraries, to talk about um, the different kinds of focus that a school library has 
to offer to students. Yeah, I was going to, I'm remembering now, and we've done sessions previously also about the internship program here where we actually bring in um, the librarians at libraries who've gotten the grants and sometimes their interns too to talk on an episode of Encompass Live so you can see. Um, you watch recordings of that, but one of them I remember as part of their plan had that it, the, the, the intern was mainly working at the public library did a um, field trip, so to speak, of a day or something at the high school library. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was one of, I can't remember which library, of course, but I remember seeing that in one of the library's plans when they came and talked about it. So even if it is the public library gets it, gets the internship, they can still introduce them to other types of librarianship out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and Laura Hess, who's here from our Stanton Public Library, says they're interested in learning more about the internship. They're a very small library, the two-person staff, so looking for ways that they could, you know, with a small staff be able to benefit from it. Absolutely. And, you know, this is another way, you know, you might be looking at having in justifying for a small, for a small increase in your budget to hire, uh, to hire a shelver or to hire, you know, just somebody who works five hours a week or something to that effect. And you could use some of this information in terms of where we're talking about an orientation plan or schedule of activities, um, even just to carve out a little bit more uh, to add to your budget. Or perhaps you're thinking of um, some volunteers and you're looking at what sort of things do you want your volunteers to learn about the library. So this can be transferred to uh, other aspects too. So we're glad that you're here. And also, again, if you can find some reasons for justification for an increase in your budget, we're hoping that you learn a few things here today. We have had a number of quite small libraries, libraries with staffs of just one or two people who have had successful internships. Um, the, uh, the grant application is not really that difficult or that long. It, it just it does take a little bit of thought about what you really, to put together a plan of what you would do um, with your intern, but um, your size has not, the size of your library is not a real consideration for us um, in terms of, of who would get the grant. Um, we also, of course, and we, we always have to put in a, 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 a plug for grants. Um, grants are one, ways for a, one of the ways that a library can really um, get extra funds for particular projects or to expand and this is a good place to to practice your grant writing. Um, grants to the Nebraska Library Commission by and large get a very sympathetic reading. We really want you to get the grant. We want you to succeed. We'll, we're happy to discuss it with you beforehand before you turn in your application to help you um, you know, to go over your application with you, help you improve your application, and it's a great way to get your feet wet in terms of how you write a grant. So we really like to encourage people to try these things. And uh, Catherine has also done previous shows on Encompass Live, <laughs> you see the little listing there, of how to write a grant. So more specifically about all the steps in that and what you need to do about um, creating your grant application in the first place. So um, that'd be a good idea to look at as well. Yep. What a great program today. Thanks for I hanging so. in there with yeah. us. Thanks for chiming in. We hope you found the information that we provided to be useful. And if you have any questions regarding any of this, you can contact me at katherine.brockmeyer at nebraska.gov. You can contact Laura Johnson at laura.johnson at nebraska.gov. Uh, Mary Jo Ryan, who is the grant coordinator from the IMLS grant, maryjo.ryan at nebraska.gov, especially as uh, if you have any questions in terms of the how the money, the flow of uh, the funding goes. And then Robin Clark is the president of the Nebraska Library Association. And so if you'd like to talk with her about the bigger picture too, um, they, you know, they too work with libraries of all kinds and um, all shapes and all sizes. And so she might have some insight for you too in terms of what you'd like to see in your internship. Uh, we do have some thanks coming through, and um, Celine Swan um, from uh, Grand, Grand Island, Island mm -hmm. saying um, thanks. Um, they have an intern lined up, and she wants to know when they'll receive their packet. I suppose that's something that has been, I don't know. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Well, 
Celine, um, actually, there's uh, some coordination with the foundation, so we're working on that. So you can ask you can ask Steve about that too. So, and Jamie, who's our um, native Nebraskan down in Texas, says thank you. Very helpful, go Huskers. Aw, <laughs> well, thank you, Jamie. Very <laughs> super. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I think we have down here. Ah, perfect. Um, so that will wrap it up for this morning's Encompass Live. Um, so thank you very much for attending. Um, it has been recorded. It's being recorded and will be available later today for anyone who wasn't able to attend or if you want to share it with any of your um, colleagues, it'll be here on the page. Um, but I hope you'll join us next week. There we go. When, um, very exciting, um, our topic is a conversation with Nebraska's new state poet, which is new as of, I think, last year. Uh, Twyla Hansen, she will be um, joining us, Mary Jo Ryan and Rod Wagner here at the Library Commission will um, have her here in, in the room with us. And so we'll be chatting with her about being the state poet, poetry. I don't know. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, I like it when we bring on people. Hopefully she'll do some readings, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> um, so you can sign up for that, definitely, and any of our other um, shows that we have coming up in the next few weeks. Um, also, we are also on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, definitely go over there, um, like our page on Facebook, there it goes, and you'll get notices of when new shows are coming up, when the recordings are available. Um, I remind people when it, the, today's show, the current show for Wednesday, is about ready to start, so you can pop in on the fly. So definitely do, if, you're, if you like Facebook, do that, and you'll get our news from there as well. Other than that, I think we are good to go. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Laura and Catherine. This is great, great to be here. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Krista. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.